let's go ahead and get started with our homework today. Uh, we're going to start with the review and refresh. It says, find the distance between the two numbers on the number line. To do this, let's go ahead and make us a number line here to start off. So if I have this number line, I realize that my zero would have to be here. And then when I compare these numbers, since the more to the left of my number line that I go, the bigger the number I get, I know that this over here would have to probably represent negative 3.6. And then on this side in between, the two would be negative 1.7. So now we realize that we're only talking about the distance between the two numbers. We're talking about this distance from here to here. So we're going to subtract negative 3 points uh, or negative 1.7 from negative 3.6. So let's just go ahead. We're taking a uh, big number minus the small number here. And that will give us the difference. All right. Uh, I know I'm going to have to borrow one from here, which makes it a 2. Now that's 16, which makes this a 9. My decimal comes down, and 2 minus 1 is 1. Now remember, this is the distance between two objects. There's no such thing as a negative distance between two objects. So this answer is going to be 1.9. Okay, so the distance between negative 1.7 and negative 3.6 is 1.9. All right, uh, using that same fundamental, I remember we're going to be doing the even numbers, so I'll do the odd numbers here. Uh, let's do the, go to number 3. It says negative 1 and 2 ninths and negative 3 and 7 18. So I'm going to be taking this number and subtracting this number from it. To do this, I'm going to have to do a couple of steps first because I realize that I'm going to have to take these and turn them into improper fractions. So let's start with negative 3 over 7 eighteenths. All right. Uh, now I realize I'm going to have to take 18 times 3 and then add 7. We call this going around the world. So Let's get our calculator out, make sure we're getting the right answer. 18 times 3 plus 7. And that's going to give us 61. So this is really going to be negative 61 over 18. All right. Now we're going to go to negative 1 and 2 ninths. I'm going to do this again. I'll take 9 times 1, that's 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. So this would be negative 11 over 9. Now we also have to remember that in order to add and subtract, we need our denominator to be the same. So uh, since 18 is twice as much as 9, I can multiply 11 over 9 to 2 over 2. Remember, I'm allowed to multiply any number to 1 and it equals itself. Every fraction is a division problem. So this is 2 divided by 2, and that equals 1. So that's going to give us uh, negative 11 times 2 to be negative 22. And 9 times 2 will give me 18. And now I'm ready to combine these numbers. I'll put my negative 61 over 18, and I'm subtracting 22 over 18. Well, I know my denominator is going to be 18. That's the good news. That in this, now I've got to subtract 22 from 60, or 61. 2 cannot be subtracted from 1, so I'm going to borrow 1 from here. It's going to turn this to a 5. I'm going to turn that 1 into an 11. Uh, that's going to give me uh, 2 minus 11, which will be 9. And 5 minus 2, which would be 3. 
And remember, we're talking distance, no such thing as negative distance. So this would be 39 over 18. Now I realize I have an improper fraction. I've got to turn it into a proper fraction. So how many times does 18 go into 39? Because remember, this is really 39 divided by 18. I'm going to do the work over here. I think most of you can pretty much figure this out. 39 divided by 18. Well, I know 18 times 2 will give me 36. So I'll put a 2 over here, 36 here. And that's going to leave me 3. So I know uh, this is going to equate to 2 and 3 over 18. I have to remember to reduce. Both 3 and 18 are divisible by 3. So um, I'm going to turn this into 2. And 1, 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 18 divided by 3 is 6. So this is really 2 and 1, 6. So um, the distance between negative 3 and 7 18ths, negative 1 and 2 ninths, is 2 and 1, 6. All right, let's go ahead and look at number five now. Number five says the product. Find the product. If I was to go ahead and do this, I simply multiply these together. Um, remember to include our decimal in our answer. So eight times six, uh, that's 48. Eight times six is 48 again, but we add four more this time. So that's going to be uh, 52. carry the 5. 5 times 6 would be 30, plus 5 make 35. And now we have to remember to bring that decimal into our answer. So since there are two places the decimal uses, we will come back two places. Our answer has to be 35.28. Alright, let's go ahead and work this one over here. Uh, I'm going to take a shortcut just like I know you guys will. We could stack these and do them just like we did. Or I could say that 5.49 times 13.5 is equal to 74.115. And we know that that decimal point had to be three spaces because there was one, two spaces here, plus one space here. That makes one, two, three spaces. It had to go back. Now let's go to number 9. It says find the missing values of these ratios. You see that 2 and 18 are here. 2 had to be multiplied to 9 in order to get 18, which means 72 will have to be divided by 9 to get our answer. 72 divided by 9. That's pretty easy, right? 8. Now we have 3 fourths. And we've got to take 3 four, or excuse me, 4 over 3. And 4 over 3 divided by 9, or excuse me, multiplied to 9. We'll give me 4 times 9, that's 36 over 3. And remember, every fraction is a division problem. So 36 divided by 3 is 12. All right, uh, let's move off to number 11. Without dividing, determine whether the decimal form of the fraction terminates or repeats. Okay, so it says without dividing, determine whether the decimal form of the fraction terminates or repeats. Okay, um, well, we can go ahead and find this pretty easy. So finding these answers are only possible if you know uh, what the denominator's uh, power is and, uh, as far as what it can go into. So I want you to just be able to actually divide these and give the answer. 
So I want you to go ahead and get in the uh, habit of just, you can either use your calculator or figure it out. This would be five, five by seven. I'm gonna do the first one without the calculator just so we get a little bit of practice here. Uh, this is five, remember it's always the numerator divided by the denominator. And I can tell you this is gonna repeat. I know that because uh, I think seven goes into 10, not a factor of 10. If we did this, I'd have to put a decimal here and then put a zero here. I know that seven goes into 49 seven times, right? And that's gonna give me 49. That's gonna give me one as a remainder. And then I have to put a zero here. Seven goes into 10 one time. And that's gonna give me a remainder of three. And then I'm gonna put uh, seven goes into 30 <clears throat> and say uh, four times, which will give me 28. And then that'll leave me a remainder of two. And then seven will go into 20, uh, two times, which will give me 14, giving me a remainder of six. And then seven will go into 60. I'm gonna go with six times, no, I'm sorry, uh, eight times, which will give us uh, 50, 6. That's going to give us 4 left over. Um, let's see. I have to come up here because I'm running out of room. Uh, and I have to say, my times 7 going to 40. Um, that's going to be <coughs> let's see, um, 5, right? Because 7 times 5 is 35. That's going to leave me five left over. And I would keep going, but look over here. That's what we started with, five, which means we're going to repeat all this. So my guess one's going to stay here, and this is going to be seven, one, four, two, eight, five repeating. So that is going to be a repeating number. So uh, answer number 11 is repeats. All right, number 13, we're going to take a shortcut and go with, yeah. so if we check this out, uh, we would go 5 divided by 24, and that gives us, look at that, another repeating number, 2083 repeating, 2083, and the 3 is repeating, okay? All right, so um, that one is also going to repeat. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's see. I got number 15. It says, write the fraction or mixed number as a decimal. If I do this once again, we're taking 1 and dividing it by 11. And I'm going to take the shortcut. 1 divided by 11. Okay. Uh, 0 0.0909, so 0 0.09 repeating. All right, number 17 is negative 7 over 9, so that's 7 divided by 9. That's going to give us 7 repeating, 0 0.7 repeating. Okay, uh, let's go to number 19. Concept skills and problem solving. So it looks like since it's a runoff of this, that once again we are looking at changing these numbers to decimals, I believe, right? Uh, so I'm going to get our calculator out and knock these out real quick. This is 17 divided by 40. Oh, and, and I apologize. Over here, this one should have been negative, so I'm repeating. Uh, I forgot that negative sign there. All right, so let's get to number 18. Oh, number 19, excuse me. 
got one and five six. So we're going to turn, turn this into an improper fraction. Six times one is six. Six plus five is 11. So this is really 11 over six. Okay. Now you could do it this way and say 11 divided by six. And you'll get 1.83 repeating. 1.83 repeating. The other thing you could do is realize 1 is in front, so you automatically add 1 and just put 5 and divide it by 6. And that will also give you your 0.83 repeating. See? So you would just take the 1 and put it first, then put the decimal and put 8, 3. And since 3 goes on forever, you put a line over 3 to show it's repeating. All right? Let's move on to the next one. Uh, we're going to number 21. 25 divided by 24. You see, this is pretty easy, standard stuff. We got 1.0416 repeating. 1.0416. One six repeating. Now you might say, Mr. Mendez, look over here, there's a seven at the end. Remember, your calculator is going to round up. So if this number is bigger than five, your last number will go up to seven, indicating it goes on forever. All right, let's go to number 23. In fact, I'm not going to do number 23. I think that you've got uh, a handle on and understand. What you're supposed to do, either you go around the world first, turn it into an improper fraction, and divide the top by the bottom, or you can put negative 2 in front, and then just put your decimal, and then put 17 divided by 8 in your calculator, and you'll find out the rest of it. Okay? I'm counting on you to do the rest of those now that I've done those. Uh, let's look at number, word problem number 26. Your friend writes negative 7 over 11 as a decimal. Is your friend correct? Explain your reasoning. Remember, he wrote this as a decimal. So they're saying that they wrote this to be negative 0 0.63 repeating. Let's go to put the, in our calculator. If we do, we're just going to put 7 divided by 11. And that's going to give us 0 0.636363. Now notice this line is over the 3. It is not over the 6. So this is incorrect. What it should be is negative 0 0.63, but both the 6 and the 3 should have a line over them indicating that they both repeat. All right, I'm going to go on to number 28 now. And I know that I went over to even numbers, so I no need to correct me when we get to class. Write the decimal as a fraction or a mixed number in simplest form. So now we're writing this as a fraction. Now remember, if it doesn't have a line over it, the first rule is <clears throat> whatever numbers have are uh, following the decimal, we put a zero under each and then put a one in front. So now I have 45 over 100. Okay. Now I have to reduce. I have to say what goes into 45 and 100. I'm going to say 5. So 45 divided by 5 is 9. Oh, let me put divided by 5 so that's evident what we're doing. We're dividing this by 5 over 5. Remember, I'm allowed to divide or multiply any number to 1. V equals itself. So by dividing it by 5 over 5, remember 5 divided by 5 is 1. So I'm just using it in a different form. 45 divided by 5 equals 9. And 100 divided by 5 equals 20. And I cannot reduce this anymore. My answer has to be 9 over 20. All right. Um, let's go ahead and look at number... Well, I think you can figure out using that same technique these, this just has a negative number, so we're still going to put three zeros over here for each one of the numbers that's after the decimal, and put a one in front. Now I have uh, 312 
over 1,000. I have to remember this is a negative because it was a negative decimal. Uh, I know that I can divide both of these by 2. Okay, and this is going to give me uh, 100 and, oh boy, uh, let's see, 2 would be 1 and 5. Um, so I'm going to say 151. So I'm dividing both of these by 2. And that'll be negative 151. And you know what? I take that back because that one there, that's going to be 156, I believe. Let's go ahead and double check that. Okay. 312 divided by 2. Yep, 156. All right. And then 100 divided by 2 would be 50. Oh, excuse me, 500. That's 1,000 divided by 2. And now we got two even numbers again. So I'm going to have to divide it by two again. All right. And now we have um, well, six divided by two is three. So that's going to equal, let's see, three. And then we got um, 50 divided by two would be. 25, so actually that 56 divided by 2 is going to be 23. And 100 divided by 2 will be 50. So 50 plus 2 would be 73. So that turns to 73. We'll double check that with the calculator. 156 divided by 2, 78. Oops, my apologies. Always double check your work. And 500 divided by 2, that's definitely 250. Once again, another even number. All this became a drag. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm going to work over here to give myself some space. And uh, let's see, that's going to be 250. Let's go ahead and erase this, giving us some space just in case this keeps happening. Uh, 78 divided by 2. I'm not going to make any errors this time, I'm just going to divide it by 2 here. That's going to give us 39. All right. Negative 39. And I know that uh, 250 divided by 2, that's going to give me 125. And we cannot reduce this anymore. So we should get negative 39 over 125. And that is our final answer, so I'm going to circle around it because there's a lot of stuff over here to confuse us. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to do one of them where it has a number in front. Uh, and this is pretty easy because with a number in front, it tells me that same number is going to come up into my fraction. I'll put a negative 1 there. Now I just have to do 64 and do the same thing that I did over here. I'll put a 0 underneath each one of these. So it'll be 64 over 200 and then one zero in front of it. Remember, one zero for every one of the numbers there, as long as the numbers don't repeat. Okay, so now I have to take 64 and divide it by 2. Remember, we're still going to have negative 1 over here. 64 divided by 2 would be 32. And 100 divided by 2 would be 50. I'm going to work this just a little bit quicker. And now 32 divided by 2. So this is going to be equal again. 
to negative 1. And a 32 divided by 2 is 16. And 50 divided by 2 would be 25. And we can't reduce this anymore, so our answer should be negative 1 and 16 over 25. All right, let's move on down. Um, I'm going to let you do number 20, 35 there. Let's go ahead and look at this for comparing rational numbers. We want to see which one's bigger or smaller. We've got negative 4 and 6 tenths and negative 4 and point, uh, six five. Well, I can tell you right now that if uh, I was to put a 0 here and a 0 here, uh, this would be 60 over 100. And if I put 100 over here, this would be 65 over 100. So that tells me that this is less than this. Okay? Um, you're going to have to go ahead and take one of the numbers and make it a decimal to match the other, or take the decimal and turn it to a fraction in order for you to be able to find out which one is less and which one's more. And I'll let you do 37 and 48 on your own. Uh, let's see, it says 39. Modeling in real life is the half pipe deeper than the skating bowl. All right, so we're going to have to look at these and see which one's deeper. Well, we know that this is negative 9 and 8 over 3 repeating, while this is negative 9 and 5 over 6. So the best thing we could do is find out what is 5 divided by 6. And that is 0.83 repeating. Look at that. They're both negative 9, 8, 3 repeating. So is half height deeper than the skating bowl? Well, I would say no. These are identical numbers. I'm just going to double check to make sure it wasn't an 8, 3 repeating. No, 8 and then 3 repeating. That's exactly what this is over here. So um, is it deeper? No, they're the same. All right, we're going to skip number 40. I'm going to leave that for you. Uh, now I'm going to go to check these out. It says order, ordering rational numbers. They want you to put these in order. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and take a look at number 41 here. Uh, it says negative 3 fourths, 0. 0.5, 2 thirds, negative 7 over 3, and 1.2. If I was to do this, I have to put them all in one type of number. I'm going to put them all the decimal. I know 3 divided by 4 is 0.75, so this is going to be negative 0.75. Okay. Uh, 0.5 is already written in decimal form, so I don't have to do anything with that. Notice there's not a negative in front, so this is a positive number. And we have 2 thirds. Well, 2 divided by 3 is going to give us, uh, I'm pretty sure, 6 repeating, 0.6 repeating. So let's go ahead and look that in the calculator and just see how that comes out. 2 divided by 3 will give you 0.6 repeating. So this is going to equal 0.6, and that 0.6 is going to go on forever. Uh, the next one is negative 7 over 3. Well, I know 3 goes into 7 twice. So that's actually going to be equal to um, negative 2 and 1 third, right? You can see I'm just going to do the work over here. This is really 7 divided by 3. 3 goes into 7 two times with 1 left over. Okay, so we've got um, 3 and, uh, excuse me, 2 and 1 third. Now I have to say, what is uh, one-third? I know one-third is 0 0.3 repeating. So this is going to be equal to negative 2 0.3 repeating. And now the last one is 1.2. So that's going to be left the way it is, 1.2. Okay, so I'm going to put a comma after all our answers. Okay, and erase this over here, so we don't get confused with anything. And now when we look at these, we can see which one's bigger. 
first we've got to deal with the negative numbers. The bigger the negative number, the more uh, smaller it is. So negative 2.3 repeating has to be the smallest number. So that means negative 7 over 3 is the smallest number. Next is the other negative number that we have here, negative 0.75. So we're going to put uh, negative 3 fourths as our next smallest number. Uh, after that, we've got positive numbers left. We've got 0 0.5, 0 0.6 repeating, and 1.2. Well, we know that any number that starts uh, has a decimal in front of it is less than 1. So the smallest number out of all these is going to be 0 0.5. The next biggest number would be 0 0.6 repeating because 0 0.6 is bigger than 0.5. So that would make two-thirds as the next biggest number. And that only leaves one number left, and that's 1.2. That makes sense because uh, 1 is bigger than a uh, part of a number, like 0.5. And so now we have all our numbers in order from least to greatest. I'm going to let you go ahead and do number 42 through 46 on your own. And let's see. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 47. The table shows uh, the change in the water level of a pond over several weeks order the numbers from least to greatest. I'm actually going to leave you number 47 because it was very much like the ones we did up here. I think you can figure it out. Let's go to number 48. Open end. Find one terminating decimal and one repeating decimal between one half and negative one-third. All right, so we're going to find one terminating decimal and one repeating decimal between these. And the book is just going to give you a sample answer, and their sample answer is negative uh, 0.4 and uh, negative 0.5 repeating. All right. Um, you might be saying, okay, how do, how do they come up with that? Uh, you're going to have to go ahead and find common denominators and then break down the numbers even uh, to smaller, uh, or I'm sorry, to make the uh, numerators. Uh, and then once you find what the numerator is with the common denominator, you'll be able to divide those fractions uh, and figure it out. So let's just use this as an example here. If I wanted to take negative one half, and remember I need a number in between here, so I'm going to make my denominators six. So in order to make uh, one half six, I'd be multiplying two to three, so I'd have to multiply the one to three. That would make this negative three over six. And over here, um, we have negative one third. So to make this six we would have uh, to multiply it to 2, so this would be negative 2 over 6. Now remember, you're needing numbers that are in between here. So once again, you can multiply these numbers to even smaller or uh, bigger denominators, which would make a bigger difference in your numerators. Uh, for example, if I was to multiply 6 times 10, and make both of these 60. All right, that would go ahead and uh, make this 30, so this would be 30 over 60. And that would make this 20, so this would be negative 20 over 60. And now I have a bigger range of numbers to choose from. All right. So I could pick a number, uh, let's just say like 32 over 60, okay? Remember, we're looking for numbers in between. So I could say uh, negative 30, it can't be a bigger number, it has to be in between here. So I actually would have to be, let's see, I'm going to go back on this. It would have to be something like negative 28 over 60. 
let's see what happens when I do that. That's going to give me 0.46 repeating. Okay. Um, remember, we're not trying to match the book's answer. We're just coming up with some. Now I found a repeating number, right? Because the goal was to find a terminating decimal and one that repeats. So this would be an example of a repeating one. We would have a 0.46 repeating. Now let's try to find one that isn't going to uh, repeat. And let's just say if I use, uh, let me just try this, maybe negative 25 over 60. Let's see what happens. That also gave me a repeating decimal. That's not going to work. Remember, I'm trying to find one that, that terminates. So I'm going to have to cross that one out. All right, let's go with, um, how about, well, let me throw these one at a time. What if I do 21 divided by 60? Look at that. 21 divided by 60 gave me 0.35. So I could go with negative 21 over 60. And that gave us negative 35, negative, excuse me, negative 0.35. All right. So uh, that would be my examples that I could give of numbers that are uh, between those two numbers. Uh, one is a repeating decimal, and one is a terminating decimal. All right, I'm leaving the rest for you. That was enough for me. Um, hope that that helped uh, you figure out how to do all of your homework. I'll see you in class to check it. Good night.